and call the meeting to order. Sandy, will you call the roll, please? Lunchwick? Here. Cutter? Here. Jacobson? Here. This is Jacobson. Jurgens? Here. Roberts? Here. Sorensen? Here. Russells? Here. Lines? Here. Here. <coughs> May I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? So moved. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Come before, please. Motion made the reading of the minutes of the July 10th, 2007 regular meeting and the July 24th, 2007 special meeting and approve them as printed. Second. The motion is to waive the reading of the minutes of July 10th, 2007 regular meeting and July 24th, 2007 special meeting and approve them as printed. Is there discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. We we'll move on to number five, citizen appearances. There are no public hearings tonight, so this is the time on the agenda for the public to make comment. Um, what I would ask, first of all, if there are any persons here that wish to comment other than from the Soul Committee, ECP, or the West Side Stormwater problems. Are there any other issues that a citizen would like to comment about tonight? Okay, then we will move first of all to the Soul Committee. Hello, I'm Gilbert Rebo to the Soul Committee. Um, first I want to recognize that there's a lot of Soul people and people from the city here uh, tonight to back the case for moving those funds to the lake, which finance board and the park board and uh, the public works have already done. Uh, second, we passed out a letter uh, for Seoul. Uh, there was a request from Fred and the public board about it, and that's our official answer at this point. Uh, third, we have 476 people that signed up uh, basically saying we'd like to see the tax people, tax monies go for fixing the lake. There are still several sheets out circulating and we aren't done yet. We're going to keep going on this for a while. But, uh, I just thought I'd like to let you know that statistically all of us had less than 30 people who said no, they didn't want to sign or they were afraid there was going to be a tax problem. Some of those people just didn't understand what was happening. Some of them uh, felt that the lake should be returned to normal. But out of 476, I think 30 is a pretty small percentage. Any questions? Any questions for Bill? Can you talk to the work? Okay, thank you. PCP. to celebrate. We're thanking the city for a successful 4th of July and we thank you for all that you helped in that. Uh, the park committee, Ray Anderson and his staff had it looking great as all you people that must have been there were, were celebrating. John Rasmussen came up on an emergency situation when it was after hours and he helped us with the electricity problem and the police also helping um, with all the activities uh, during the day and at night. Do you have enough down here, Tony, yep. to pass them? Good. Anybody wants some more, I've got extra copies. As you can read, there were over 100 volunteers throughout uh, the six days that we had this 4th of July celebration, representing 150 organizations and businesses from the Evansville area, <clears throat> and we really, really appreciated all the ones that were sponsors and volunteers at the same time. Now, ECP did the music part of it and the big tents and things, but it's also another fund is the 4th of July Committee, and that 4th of July Committee involves lots and lots of community people, and so we thank them because they each have their own interests in the 4th of July celebration. 
So there's really two different accounts. What was on the 4th of July afternoon, it was late, and Grandpa came down into the area where I happened to be, and he said, what a fantastic day we have been. And he said, I think what's the nicest part of it about this community, there's nice people here all day. And on Sunday when it was so beastly hot and the car show was there, I was sitting with two men from Stoughton, and he, they both said, wow, this is a great community festival. Next year we're going to bring our wives. <laughs> and so thank you, thank you all for coming. And if you haven't tried the Lumper Lob, we definitely encourage you all to participate in that next year. And if you don't know what it is, that's why you need to come and see it. Okay, also on this agenda, you see that uh, John Decker, uh, with the sponsorship of UB&T, have acquired the Foundation Directory of Wisconsin. So if there's any groups looking for grants of any needs or activities that they're working towards within the city, please stop at the ECP office to look at that book or contact John Decker. We have two new board members, Kathy from the library, Kathy Kemp, and Rich Nordoff, uh, Nordoff from, um, from the community, and they've added a lot to our board already. You also notice that it's Imagine Us, Creating Our Community's Future, and this is a group of citizens, organizations, and interested people in creating a uh, strategic planning committee that is going to look at where we've been and where we want to go. And it is open to everyone, and they're inviting it into the surrounding <coughs> townships and communities to work together also. And they are planning to have a meeting or a gathering um, for the strategic planning <coughs> next spring, 2008. So please, any of you that are interested, you are welcome to come to the library. Their next meeting is at 11.30 on August 21st. And then Just Desserts. Just Desserts. This is a biannual situation. You can just pay off the city's You must be losing up. Just Desserts is appropriately being held on September 11th in recognition of volunteers. And it's going to be at the J.C. McKenna Middle School this year. Anyway, it is a time to recognize people that have volunteered above and beyond. And it's their time to get their just desserts. And so on the back of this report, you see there is a blank sheet of paper that needs to be filled in with your recommendation of a volunteer that you wish to have recognized on September 11th. So we encourage, even though you're not going to be recognized, maybe come and support those people that are on September 11th. Thank you again. Water uh, problems, and uh, what I would like is for citizens to um, give your name and your address. Um, we want to hear your concerns. We'd like you to keep them brief. We normally say three minutes. Uh, we'll grant you a little latitude, but don't keep us an hour because your neighbors want to speak. Um, we'd uh, like to know um, the, the details of your particular house. Um, we are interested in working with the citizens, but we do need to know exactly what occurred on your property. So um, if you would like to start out, um, someone? I'll go. Okay. Steve Mouch, New on South 6th Street, 571. Uh, you were there Sunday, and you were there Sunday, all three days. Uh, 2004, it rained for three days. We had a problem, and people here said the problem with the flooding was that somebody's fence was in the way. Uh, 
Well, I wasn't here in April this year, but uh, somebody filmed it. We're big time now because it was on YouTube. And people can't believe, when you show people those pictures, they can't believe that's supposed to be dry ground. We made the newspapers in Janesville front page last week, second page today, and I guess we're going far as Re Reedsburg. Is that the way we want to treat our citizens here? Because what's happening is, you said it, you fixed the problem, it's not. The three-day rain we had in 2004, it was up to the tree line. The rain, first rain we had two weeks ago on a Saturday, that was one night. And it was four feet higher than it was 2004. So whatever the problem that they said they fixed, it's not fixed. And like I said, Mayor, you were there. If you can't tell me that's not a problem, and you came after it went down the sun. We got six feet of water right there right now. If we get a rain like we did last night, which last night rain was only like three hours. You get two, three days. One neighbor, I don't know their name, but when I left to work on that Tuesday morning, the water was six inches from the basement window. That rain was 10 feet from my place. So if we get a three day rain, they're going to be in my basement windows. So that's what I got. Okay, thank you. Yes, I'm Stephanie Bickler, that's 579 South 6th Street. First, I just want to say, so committee can purchase our lakefront property at 579 South 6th Street. They have to worry about the Toyota. Um, anyways, I guess my concern was actually today, I went over there and it was worse than it was when you guys were there, way worse. In fact, the drainage pond next to the brown house that sits right there has actually met with the other pond that now they form one big lake. So if you were over there this morning, you'd see the lake that actually covers the whole south part of that neighborhood. We were out there this morning, it was the worst I've ever seen. And that was just from one day of being um, Both of those ponds had actually backed into one another, and it formed about a, I'd say, 20 to 30 foot wide river that you can white water raft down in our backyard. And that is my concern as a child drowning in that. There are kids that play in that pond all the time. They shouldn't be. But when it's in their backyard and they want to go outside and play, and I just don't want it to see a fatality is what causes action to be taken place. I'd like to try to prevent that. And I'd like to also see the people in the neighborhood be able to use their yards again. It'd be really nice. And um, we, we did deal with this in 2004. And the city went out there and they took a shovel and they dug a little and they said it was fine. Um, you know, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that the land is level. There is no way that that is going to drain. The ditches aren't deep. They're not drenched deep enough. It's the, the swale or whatever they want to call it is very shallow. There's no way water is going to run there. It's simply just going to keep rising. So that whole thing needs to be redesigned. And I know they say that, that it was engineered to drain, but really, uh, it doesn't take a rocket science. It's an engineer to go down there and look at it, and you can actually go the opposite direction that the city planned for it to go. Someone else? Yes. My name is John. I live on 587 South 6th Street. Um, I just built a swing set uh, for my kids, and it took me all day. Uh, so and the day that it rained, um, I looked outside and it was going down in the back of our yard. The sand was all the way down in the yard. All the, um, uh, the mulch was just washed away. And, and my kids' his toys were down in the, the, his, his <coughs> house. We had to go get them. And I remember walking through and it was about knee high. And I'm six one. So. I just would like to see at least something done, you know, I mean, we do pay property taxes, you know, so everybody else can pay quite a bit, you know, and I just would like to see something done, you know, if it's possible. Any of you three have what basements? It's the backyard, the water in the backyard. Okay, thank you. Yes. Jim Brooks, 563 South 6th. Uh, I've got a couple of sets of pictures here, two sets of identical. Uh, the first one is taken out my backyard. And my lot ends where that bush is on the left. This looks at the old Abbey retention pond. The city did a lot of work on the Abbey retention <coughs> pond on South 6th Street, working that drainage ditch that goes off to the left at the front of this picture. 
raise the berm on this retention pond 18 inches. You can see that berm right around the back of the, the water here. You can also see just about in the middle where the water is coming off Westfield Meadows green space over the top of that berm, adding water to our, our at the Abbey uh, retention pond. Uh, as you go further west from where that water is, it's the Westfield Meadows retention ponds. They were both full and the water was coming through. I think that's why a week ago Tuesday our water went so high because we were getting water coming back from the west that couldn't go anywhere. Uh, if you look at the second picture, the blue tab, that's the V plate north of Porter Road on the new regional retention pond. This was taken about 7 o'clock last Tuesday morning. The water's about a foot over the V plate. Uh, down at the very bottom of that plate is a tile. Uh, it's my opinion, I'm not an engineer, it's my opinion if we recalibrate that V plate, move that notch up, there's a lot of room in that new retention pond to store water, let it come out slowly like it's supposed to be, not fill up the Westfield Meadows ponds as fast as they filled up last week, and hence not bring that water all back into heavy cough. Uh, if you look at the very right side, which is the east side of that plate, you can see at 7 o'clock last Tuesday morning that plate had already started to fail. The water's coming around on the right side of it. 6 o'clock tonight when I drove out there, the water's coming through underneath that plate and around both sides. If we get another rain tonight, like we got last week, that plate will be out. Again, my opinion, if we get that plate anchored in there, recalibrate it like it's supposed to be, we can end part of these problems. Uh, I think it's important that we do that. We've had discussions here. Uh, a lot of you know this isn't my first time here talking about these water problems. The last time we were here talking about these water problems in Westfield Meadows, we were talking about the occupancy permits, how they wouldn't be granted until these problems were fixed. You can see by this plate, the problem's not fixed. Uh, third picture, purple tab, is uh, what seems to be a new problem in the neighborhood. This is a backyard of 531 South 6th. That's us. Okay. Uh, I'll let them speak to how high the water was. I've not seen it this high uh, in April of this year or in 2004. I'm not sure why that water's backing up that way unless it's coming from, coming from the west and north because nothing has changed to the east that would have it draining into their backyard. And uh, the next picture, the pink tab, is looking south from my yard, uh, back through all of these yards that we've just spoken, uh, back at the pond of Vision 6, which is the last picture. And you, the yellow tab, and you can see how the pond of Vision 6 has flooded back over the back uh, would that be the northwest corner and is flooding in the Abbey Cough range where it was never meant to be. Uh, that's what's changed. The city's done a lot of work in the Abbey Cough subdivision and we're getting swamped from the south and from the north and west and our backyards can't handle it. I mean, the city's done a lot of work. Thank you. It's worked. Uh, last Tuesday, my yard was dry by Wednesday morning. It's draining like it's supposed to but it can't handle the water off Westfield Meadows. So we said three years ago. Thank you for your time. Yes. <clears throat> uh, Mark Schnepper, 547 South 6th Street. And I do have some pictures that kind of substantiate what Jim had said. Uh, these are from this morning, about 7.30 a.m. Uh, if you look at the pictures one and four, they do show water that appears to be running down from Westfield Meadows into the Abbey Pond. And then uh, the same things he said about the Beanox, that's uh, picture number six. It, it's showing a fairly empty pond back there, but it's all coming down on us. And so same thing today as it was Tuesday. And just to kind of cover what we had before, back in April, Mr. Sauer had tried to explain to us that groundwater and stormwater are two completely different things. but we. We've had the argument that we had two events pretty close together by Mr. Waitiga. 
And I think that illustrates the point that groundwater is, comes from stormwater. The two are interrelated. If you have too much stormwater, you get the groundwater, you can't take any more, and it, it causes problems. There, there is a correlation of that if you haven't figured that out yet. Um, I am curious where I saw nine inches in the Gazette from Mr. Waitika. I, I haven't seen that substantiated. I'd like to know what that source is. And we have had some people calling for an independent review from an outside firm. That's what I'd like to see. Um, so far, we've had uh, Fawcett Van Dyke and Mr. Sauer look at all these plans, even though they've been outside engineers. But, but apparently, I would think he signed off on all of this. And so I said, well, get it right. We'll fix it. Well, I'm tired of waiting to get it right. How long before my foundation takes damage? I, I don't want to wait that long. And I, I just can't understand what's happening. And the best case scenario, it's incompetence. In the worst case, it's corruption. There's something going on with the building, the builders, the developers. And I, and I can't think of any other explanation of, of why this keeps going on, why we can't get it right. Um, as far as personally, I haven't had a wet basement, but I'm very concerned continual water is going to damage my foundation. And uh, hopefully this hasn't taken too much of your time, because uh, there has been some talk of Lawton and Kate about having a class action lawsuit, and that'll be a lot more time consuming and financially hurt the city. And I, and I don't want to go down that road. I want to get it right and move on. Thank you. Yes. yes. John Jones at uh, 531 South 6th Street. Uh, I had over well, about 75 feet of water. Retention pond over the water for seven days. Is that known? Is that the only one that does that? Um, obviously, I don't have any answers to any of those. So. Well, let me, let me try and do one, a couple things. One, I think the, the, the documentation of the rate events is something that we as a city have to do as part of our daily plan of the wastewater treatment plan. And that's that's a, that's a gauge. Um, that is a it's a document that's that's verified by by an operator. That uh, he, uh, he he reports a lot of data. It is reported every month to the to the DNR people. Um, so it is valid data, and that's where we're getting our our uh, rainfall events. So it is accurate. And uh, I think the biggest thing that uh, that you have to realize that. Even you know the other night I was I was driving from south of town, uh, south of Evansville, coming back to Madison, and that was the basically the rain event that was occurring on it was last Monday, the sixth. Um, that rain event was even more severe south of Evansville, but when I got to Evansville, it was less. And by the time I got to Oregon, it was hardly raining at all. The point is that even, even these rain events that, that we're taking all the data at the wastewater treatment plant, you know, you may be, a, you know, way on the west side or way on the east side. It is, it is a local rain event, and, but it is accurate data. We're not making up this information, so I think we can put that to bed. You can question it all you want, but it is accurate data. So how, how things are designed, and how things are done uh, at, a, at a public level for public uh, projects is to protect people and protect people's assets and uh, for the for the welfare of the people. And all of those things are, are based on on the statistics and probability. And you know, if we have a hundred-year event, uh, that's what we design for. And do we design for a two-hundred-year event? Uh, do we build? dams, we build bridges for, for those things. Well, in a way we do because we put, we would say, well, we're going to design for a 100-year event, but we're going to put some safety factors on those, even those designs. Um, even if, when you design a bridge, and everybody's aware of the bridge method in the, in the Twin Cities, you know, there's, there's so so many factors of safety that you that you put into these things, and, and you, and you you have to you have to recognize that that is all at a cost, and the city has never taken any backseat to any cost. Uh, any of the designs that have come through here, we we don't look at that as a criteria. If it has to meet a hundred-year event, 
and that's our standard, and that's what the state requires, and that's what um, any other engineering firm would require. That's what we designed. To and I think there's a lot of other people around the country that are looking at weather patterns and saying, does this make sense? Because it seems like we're getting these higher intensity rain events. It's not just the volume, but it's the intensity. And I don't think people realize the six inch rainfall, that's measured over a 24 hour time frame. Well, you could have six inches of rain over a much less time frame. That's a heck of a lot harder event to design for and take into account. That, that has not historically happened. Is it happening today? Yeah, it's happening today. Well, things are going to change and things are going to have to be adjusted, but that's what we designed for. That's what the standards are, and we've always complied with standards. Um, I don't know, um, Mason, is there other, a couple other things? Um, I know that oh, there, there was one about the, um, the, the flow off of the field of um, under the you know, Western panels getting into the water. That's the first I've heard of that. And I'm glad that that was brought up tonight because that's the information that's going to help us to solve that problem. That's, that's a solvable problem, but I didn't know about that before tonight. And I'm glad that was brought up because we can, I thought we got that fixed. They got it fixed And I appreciate that. Um, you know, that's the same thing that happens back in 2004. And we did raise that up. And if water is still coming off of that field, I'm assuming what happened was there was a breach in the, in the dike that we put up on that pond. Because I can't imagine if the water got over the top of the pond um, all through that area. But that can be fixed. Um, I know that there was a, there's a problem with the, that uh, patrol structure on the, the new pond that's north of Florida Road. And that can be fixed. Take care of that, and that whole that whole uh, structure, that whole pond up there was our attempt to say, all right, we don't have any development north of Point of Road, but we're going to put that pond in just as a safety factor, another safety factor to protect everything on the downstream end. Well, it's in, it's pretty new. It just got done last fall. Now we have a we have a we got something we got to fix it because it's not. It, it did control the water, but structurally, it failed. Well, that's, that's got to be fixed. So that's going to help the situation. How uh, much? I don't know. But we'll look at the, the elevation of where that uh, V notch was cut. And maybe maybe that has to be, uh, we haven't checked that. To be honest with you, we have not checked that. Um, we will. Um, we haven't closed that whole construction up yet because it just got done. But those are things that we can, we can make better, we can fix. And each one of these steps are, are going to take, you know, that's what we need to, to, to hear from. If there's there's other things, you know, I, I try to write down constructive items as, a, as they're being brought up. And um, the gentleman back here on the other side, on the east side of uh, South 6, that's still got some drain from, that's the first I've heard about. And I can deal with things when I hear about them, but by only. We were here in 2004, I'm sorry. Um, the west side? Mm -hmm. 
I have to look. I think it's supposed to be. Within it's between 20 and 25 feet, something like that. Did you know that was supposed to be 20 and 25 feet? You know, I, I don't think no. that, you know. I mean, we it's, no. Part of the house, we didn't even know there was.